Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie. And you know, here at the show, I appreciate the finer things, right? The finer arts. Pieces that make you reflect on inner self. Things that make you think about the wonder of life. And just the creativity of mankind. But we're going to put all that aside because we're going to talk about Mausoleum, (laughs) y'all. So when you need a movie that just makes you go, what the heck did I just watch? This is it. Mausoleum, 1983. Boy, I saw this one back in the day at, I don't know, maybe 14 years old. Had no idea what I was watching. And you know what? After watching it again, I still don't know what I'm watching. (laughs) <laughs> but we're going to talk about it anyways. You know, we love some movies just because of just how off the wall they are. Just how crazy and over the top. And uh, this one kind of falls in that category. We are talking about uh, a movie that came out in 83 that has, let's see our cast here. You got Bobby Breezy as the main character, Susan, uh, who's pretty much naked through the whole movie. Not complaining. Uh, we got Marjo Gortner, right? We got the Morjo in this movie. Uh, few and far between. Flicks with this guy. He's an icon if you're a fan of these kind of flicks. But yeah, we got Morjo. Uh, another noteworthy person here is we got Lawanda Page. The comedy stylings of Lawanda Page, who, who played Aunt Esther in uh, Sanford and Son, right? Watch it, sucker. That's who we're talking about here. And uh, she's definitely here for that reason, right? To to bring in a little bit of comedy. And uh, she scores some big points here. So let's uh, let's see what the, uh, the synopsis is for this movie. This is kind of a long one, so hang with me. A 10-year-old girl mourning the death of her mother becomes possessed by a demon who has been preying on her female ancestors for centuries. Years later, the demon starts to take over both mentally and physically. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at here. And uh, oddly enough, that, that captures the most of it, I think, as far as what happens in this movie. Um, but it's much more, much, much more than that. Um... It's got some pretty awesome effects in it for the time. Uh, and I'm going to say some movies took some liberties from this, too. I think Demon Knight, you know, uh, Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight, possibly borrowed a little bit from this movie, right? So uh, that's pretty interesting. So let's talk about this, right? Like I said, Bobby Breezy, who's Susan in the movie, is a little girl. Her mother's being buried. And... Uh, during the funeral, she's supposed to go with her Aunt Carol, and she doesn't want to, and she runs off, and through some strange special effects at this mausoleum, it's raining and smoking and everything at the same time coming out of this mausoleum, which uh, it doesn't look very good, I'm just going to say. Uh, it's it's obviously some sort of composite that they did, and uh, it's... Uh, it's it's missing some uh, uh, some some work, some details. But anyway, she goes in, and inside the mausoleum, there's a lot of a lot of rats, a lot of smoke, a lot of neon colors because that's what you have inside a uh, a mausoleum. And a tube opens up, and this hand reaches up, and then we go to modern day, right? 1983, I guess. Bobby is. Breezy. Susan is now uh, a grown lady and uh, living life to the fullest. She's married to Marjo, who uh, has made a a good living for himself. He stays gone a lot, so she's at the house by herself a lot. And uh, I don't know. Things just start happening. I'm going to go ahead and call this, uh, uh, as much as I like this movie, seeing it now, it's pretty much the slutty exorcist. (laughs) That's pretty much what we're dealing with here. A slutty version of the story of The Exorcist, right? It's another Exorcist ripoff, just with a lot of boobs. 
uh, and the same boobs. You, you only see one set, but it's pretty much continuous. And uh, while the husband's away, I guess uh, she's going to play. And something sets her off. They go to a nightclub doing a little disco dancing. And this guy is walking up to her and tries to grope her or whatever. Uh, while they're leaving, that guy comes out and kind of makes a disturbance on the way out. He gets in his car and uh, Susan kind of looks at the car and her eyes light up neon green. And then uh, the, the car starts catching on fire and the guy can't get out and he burns up to death and then the car explodes. So now she's got this power that she can, you know, do things with her mind. And that's just the beginning, right? Uh, you got several characters that come into this household that just don't make it out. The uh, the guy that's doing the yard work, right? Uh, the handyman around the house. And, of course, she's making her moves. She's being suggestive, inviting him up and, you know, flashing the boobs, all that kind of good stuff to get him to come up to the, to the house. And, uh, you know, of course, when she's done, she uh, pretty much does him in. And she turns into this creature, which is basically the thing that came out of the, out of the tomb, right? So, uh, so now the, the gardener is, is dead. Aunt Carol comes over one day and she just snaps on her and makes her float. They're like on the third story up of the house, third floor, and holds her out above, you know, high up and basically just rips her open by her mind and just drops her to the floor and splat, right? You get, uh, several of these um she goes to the mall and is interested in this painting which is if any of us came home with this painting we would get eyebrows raised at us for sure but uh she goes to buy this painting and it's not for sale it's already been sold she steals it and the guy comes after her from the from the art uh whatever it is store and uh she basically does the same thing to this guy in the middle of the mall Picks him up by his throat, but with her mind. Hovers him over the middle of the ball and drops it on a table and a big spike goes up through him. And this is, you know, it's got some uh, some pretty good gore in this. I actually caught myself smiling a few times while checking this out because the story is totally outlandish. But it's got payoffs in it. It, it, it You know, it's worth, the juice is worth the squeeze here. Um, and... You know, and you would think with a mall full of people, you know, I don't know, <laughs> people would say, you know, he didn't run and jump over the edge. He literally floated over it. So somebody had, has to, you know, recall that. Luckily, they didn't have cell phones back then because, you know, people would have all had their phones out. But anyways, long story short, more Joe's got a feeling something's wrong with his wife, which his name's Oliver, by the way. But he's always more Joe, first and foremost. Um, she goes to psychiatrist. Hello, just like the exorcist. And while she's out, she's going back to being a small girl and everything that happened, going to the mausoleum, all that kind of stuff. And then Nomad comes out, which is the name of the beast that's inside of her. And, you know, threatens the, the psychiatrist and laughs in his face. And then he, he wakes her back up. And she's like, oh, well, how'd I do? He's like, yeah, you did fine. <laughs> Which is hilarious because he just sends her on her way, right? And then he he calls somebody that's, that knows a little bit more, right? So it's basically, again, instead of it being priest in The Exorcist, it's the psychiatrist. He calls one that has a bit more background on dealing with these kind of things. And that's the team that's going to work together to uh, try to fix this problem. And... This thing just keeps getting crazier. Uh, you get a scene where, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Esther from Sanford and Son, uh, she's the housekeeper, and <laughs> she's got some some great lines in this movie that I don't want to spoil because I want you to check it out. But you know, she she goes full Esther at some points, and uh, for you that are not used to hearing her swear. I mean, you got to remember first and foremost, because she was always on Esther on Saffron and Son, but she's a stand-up comedian, and she will say pretty much anything. 
And uh, she had a line in, in Shakes the Clown that just blew my mind the first time I heard it because I thought, wow, <laughs> I can't believe she said that. And she's got a line in here. It's like, oh, yep, there you go. So, uh, but she's a little comic relief for this thing. But uh, if you like, you know, good-looking blondes running around shirtless and naked through, I don't know, 89% of a movie, this might be for you. But also, if you like crazy, over-the-top 80s style effects, uh, if you like demon outfits <laughs> with glowing green eyes, uh, if you like people being levitated and tore apart in midair, this is your kind of movie. Which all I'm really saying is, this is my kind of movie. Uh, I just, I just have fun with this one. Is it a good movie? No, it's not. But it's got weaknesses, but it's not blatant weaknesses, right? Because the acting is good. The story is what the story is. The effects are pretty good for the time. It's just a, a B movie, right? And that's about as far as I can go with it, as far as, you know, what the problems really are. It should be a more popular movie, I think. Um, it may be lacking on a few more kills, maybe, something like that. But the ones that are in it are really good. To me, it's right up there with Evil Speak, movies like that. It kind of just fits in that category uh, all the way through. Uh, just the way the movie moves along, the settings, all that stuff. So uh, there's your reference of, of going to. So I know there's a lot of people that's a big fan of this movie. And again, I'm not saying I'm not. I, I do like this movie. But uh, I can see the problems with it. But at the same time, it's a piece of the time of when these things were coming out. It's the VHS boom. And, uh, you know... People were freelancing and making any kind of movie they wanted to make at this point, and that's why I love this time period so much. It was almost, they would green light anything. And uh, that's what makes this fun. So, I'm going to give this, believe it or not, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I would revisit this one. So, uh, and again, this one is on Tubi, so you can check it out. Uh, pretty good transfer. But, uh, again, it's got more Joe in it. I mean, that that's a selling point for me automatically. But give this one a shot. It, it, this just might be your cup of tea. And uh, let me know what you think, right? There's more story. There's more detail to things that are going on in this that I'm leaving out because I don't want to ruin it for you. But, uh, yeah, check this one out. So that's all I got for this one, folks. So uh, if there's nothing else... Uh, like I said, make sure you're checking out Facebook pages, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Communicate with me. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to hear covered. And uh, till next time, folks, we will check you later. <laughs>